we need to locate some memory but we have executed so many programs okay so in the how the memory is allocated okay so in all previous programs up to now the memory is allocated during compile time for example consider the array declaration int a of 20 okay so when you declare an array of size 20 in this way okay so what happens when you compile your program memory for this array is allocated at a compile time and the allocated memory is fixed fixed means only 20 elements of memory will be allocated and that is fixed during the entire program execution that memory is fixed only 20 elements memory is available you cannot change that memory okay so this is called the static memory allocation when the memory is allocated at compile time it is called as a static memory allocation and we said that the memory is fixed okay so this static memory allocated is fixed that means the allocated memory cannot be increased or decreased during the program execution okay so our initial judgment of size if it is wrong for example okay so may cause failure of the program that means if you have not judged correctly so for example i have declared an array of size 10 but i want to store 20 elements so in that case what happens your program fails or if you have allocated an array of size 100 but you are going to store only 20 elements so what happens remaining 80 element space goes waste okay so here two things may be possible okay so in static memory allocation either the program failure of the program may occur or wastage of the memory space may takes place so to overcome these problems it is better to allocate the memory during program execution and that is called the dynamic memory allocation okay so in c language how the dynamic memory allocation can be done we'll discuss uh, in this class so the process of allocating memory at a run time is known as dynamic memory allocation so there are some predefined functions for allocating memory dynamically they are called dynamic memory allocation functions okay so first we look at those functions and their meaning then we'll try to use those functions in a, our c program to allocate memory dynamically okay so the first function is malloc function m l o c or malloc you can call it as okay so this malloc function allocates requested size of bytes that means how many bytes you want to allocate that you pass as an argument say malloc of 10 within the parenthesis if you uh, pass the number as 10 then it allocates 10 bytes of memory okay so after allocating those 10 bytes of memory that memory address should be known to us because if we want to use that memory then we should know the address so what this uh, malloc function will do is it allocates a requested size of bytes of memory and returns a pointer to the first byte of the allocated space okay so that first byte address if you catch in a pointer then you, you can access that allocated uh, memory dynamic memory you can allocate okay so first one is malloc then second function is calloc or calloc function okay so this allocates space for an array of elements now here this is allocated in terms of bytes here malloc okay but in calloc the space is allocated for an array of elements and initialized them to zero in malloc the memory allocated contains garbage value but here calloc allocates the array of elements space and initializes them to zero and then returns a pointer to the first byte of the memory okay so both functions returns a pointer and you have to catch that in a pointer variable then only we can access that then the next function is free removes previously allocated space okay now when you are allocating the space uh, dynamically before you come out from your program you must release that space you must remove that space in your program because in particular program you allocated before you close the program you release that memory so that next program will have some free memory available 
and it can use that free memory if you don't release that memory then all the memory will be consumed okay right so for that purpose we have a function called as free removes previously allocated a space okay so by default actually even if you don't remove dynamically uh, dynamically allocated memory when your program closes automatically the computer releases that memory because there is no program working on that one okay so then immediately it releases but sometimes some memory will be locked up okay so that's why we are asked to free the memory when we allocate memory dynamically we must free that memory then realloc fourth function is realloc modifies the previously allocated space so for example during execution of your program you allocated a 10 elements of space okay then afterwards you need 20 elements of space so without closing the program you can reallocate or modify the size to 20 elements that can be done by using this realloc function so these four functions malloc calloc free and realloc they are called as dynamic memory allocation functions and one essay type question will be asked in examinations on this explain dynamic memory allocation function so you need to explain about these four functions okay so we'll see one by one so first we'll talk about a malloc so malloc is used for allocating a block of memory it is used for allocating a block of a memory okay so <coughs> a block of memory may be allocated using the function malloc if you want some block say 10 bytes 20 bytes 5 bytes some block of memory if you want to allocate then we can use this uh, malloc function the malloc function reserves a block of memory of specified size you need to specify the size how many bytes you want that you must give to the malloc function then it allocates uh, those many bytes and returns a pointer of type void void pointer it returns that means what is the meaning of this void pointer void pointer means you can convert this pointer or assign it to any type of pointer we have integer pointer floating point pointer character pointer so based on our requirement you can allocate this pointer that means you can assign one this void pointer to any other type of a pointer generally one type of pointer cannot be assigned to another type of pointer that means integer pointer must be assigned to another integer pointer only you cannot allocate a floating point pointer to a integer pointer compiler gives error okay but void pointer can be assigned to any other pointer okay now if we look at the syntax of this malloc function okay now see malloc and within the parentheses give number of bytes in the parentheses give how many bytes you want you know, give the number okay so then it allocates and returns a pointer and you must type cast that pointer into required type okay so cast type star you have to write before this and uh, you must allocate uh, al assign uh, the address to some pointer variable ptr is a pointer of type required type integer or float or cat type okay so example we'll see for example I have an integer pointer p here that means the memory will be allocated for p like this four bytes because it's going to uh, store the address now if i say malloc five into size of int okay so how many bytes it will allocate five multiplied by size of int is four five into four twenty so twenty bytes of memory will be allocated okay then i am converting that into an integer pointer type that means the void pointer i am typecasting into integer type that means i am going to store integer numbers in that memory location we are telling to the compiler by using this uh, type cache okay? okay clear so then that address must be stored in a integer pointer only so that's why i use p is equal to int star this int star is nothing but typecasting the pointer void pointer okay so then malloc 5 into size of uh, int when this statement is executed what happens we'll see here so malloc uh, allocates uh, elements five elements five elements and each element is of size what integer type so that's why 
for five elements the memory is allocated like this and the total five into four 20 bytes this is 20 bytes of block of memory will be allocated okay and this 20 bytes of block now can store only five elements because i want to store only five elements five integers i want to store okay so this way when you are programmed that means when this statement is executed at that time this memory will be allocated yellow color block of memory will be allocated okay so then the first block first byte is there now this first byte address will be returned assume that it is 2004 okay so that 2004 will be stored in a p nothing but we are saying that p is pointing to this block of memory that means now there is a handle to access this block of memory that is nothing but your pointer p okay so this statement the above statement p is equals to int star malloc 5 into size of int okay so this is diagrammatically shown in this way okay that means five elements five integer elements memory is allocated and this memory address will be stored in uh, assigned to p okay so in other way we say that p is pointing to this block of memory okay so that is how we can access allocate the memory dynamically okay malloc function so what is there in p 2004 2004 is nothing but address of a first byte of a allocated memory okay right now total how many bytes 20 bytes will be allocated okay so if first element address is 2004 what is the address of second element each element four bytes what is the address of second byte so 2004 means four five six seven these four bytes will be allocated for this uh, first element so then second element address will be 2008 then third element address 2012 fourth element address 2016 fifth element address 2020 okay so these address calculation you must uh, know okay so if you know first element address then what is the address of second element third element sometimes in interview questions will be asked on this okay right now see here the storage space allocated dynamically has no name now previously when we allocate a memory we are giving a name to that memory like uh, say for example int a four bytes will be allocated and those four bytes will be given a name a there okay but here when you allocate a memory dynamically there is no name to this allocated space and therefore its contents can be accessed only through pointer using this pointer only we can access these uh, elements of dynamic memory please remember this okay right now for example here in this memory what kind of numbers i can store here i can store only integer numbers because i said five elements each element is of size integer type so five integer numbers memory will be allocated so that's why you have to store only integer numbers in this if you store some characters or floating point numbers that gives error okay now i want to allocate memory for characters okay so using same malloc how i can do that see example now i am declaring a character pointer here char star ptr okay so then for ptr memory is allocated like this then now i can say for example for 10 characters i want to allocate memory so simply i can say malloc within the parentheses give the number 10 because each character takes only one byte each character takes only one byte you can even write 10 star size of char size of char is one only in previous one we have written size of int no size of int may be different on different uh, machines okay so that's why depending on the machine on which it is executing it allocates a uh, memory for integer okay but here for character on any machine it is one byte only okay so that's why you can just uh, give the number malloc of 10 so 10 bytes memory will be allocated and then that memory pointer you typecast into char star okay so that means you are going to store characters in this allocated memory and you catch that address in a character pointer that's why we said ptr is equals to char star malloc of 10 
So when the statement is executed, now memory is allocated for 10 elements in this way. And the total how many bytes? 10 bytes of memory. And the first byte address will be stored in a PTR. Okay. So we can say that PTR is now pointing to this uh, block of memory. Okay. Right. So the address of first byte will be present in that 10 bytes will be allocated. So if I assume address of first byte is 1001, then that 1001 will be stored in a PTR. PTR contains 1001. Okay. Right. So what is the address of second byte? Each byte occupies one no. Sorry, each uh, element, each character occupies one byte. No. So if first character 1001. First location address is 1001, second location 1002, next location 1003, next location 1004, next location 1005, next 1006, next 1007, next 1008, next 1009 and uh, last element will be at uh, 1010. Okay. Now, once we allocate memory and we store elements and we finish our task okay so then immediately we need to release the allocated space so how we can release by using free function okay so free is function is used for releasing the user space now just see here compile time storage of a variable is allocated and released by the operating system with its storage class okay operating system will release the compile time storage space okay but with a dynamic uh, or runtime allocation it is our responsibility to release the space when it is not required that means when the space is not required then we should release the space using free function okay so what is the syntax of this free function free and within the within the parenthesis view pointer as argument so whatever pointer is pointing that pointer will be removed to from that space that means now the space is released logically speaking that space is released but physically it is there okay so where ptr is a pointer to memory block which has already been created okay right so now we'll write a program that reads a table of integer whose size will be specified interactively at runtime okay so you want to store some uh, table of integers and that size uh, how many integers initially you do not know okay so based on if you enter number of integers 10 only 10 integers memory should be allocated if you enter number of integers 20 then 20 integers memory should be allocated but in arrays programs we have seen that we have allocated an array of size 20 or array of size 50 we allocated but we have stored only 10 elements there the space is wasted there okay so to avoid that now here based on the required number we allocate a memory here okay so this can be done by using dynamic memory allocation functions okay so how we can do that hope question is clear to you okay right now include the header file so stdlib i am including then main function begin the main so i am declaring two pointers here p and q integer type okay so for p memory will be allocated for q memory will be allocated this way okay so then i have declared a number because through keyboard i have to read how many integers so n integers i want to read n i have to declare so for n also memory will be allocated then ask the user how many elements in the table okay so scan of percentage b comma address of n so that means whatever number he enters that you catch in the address of a n using scanf function okay right now see for example i am taking an example n is equal to 5 n is equal to 5 i have given okay so then you can allocate a memory using malloc function this way okay so how you can allocate memory malloc now you want to allocate memory for n elements okay so malloc you can say and within the parentheses give n into size of int n into size of int okay so if n is equal to 5 then like this for 5 integers the memory will be allocated okay 
and this returns a void pointer. So what you have to do? You have to typecast this into integer type. So before malloc, within the parentheses, you have to write like this, int star. You have to write int star. This is nothing but changing a void pointer to integer pointer. This is known as typecasting. This is known as typecasting. Okay. So you are typecasting a void pointer to integer pointer. Okay. Now this block of memory is allocated. Okay. And uh, it has no name. Then we need to access this memory. So its address will be returned here. That address you have to catch in some variable. So then p is equal to if you say now the first byte address 1002 will be stored in p. Nothing but now we can say that p is pointing to this uh, block of memory. Now we can access a uh, now we can access this block of memory using the pointer p. Okay, if you don't catch this, otherwise there is no way to access this memory block. Okay, so that's why you have to say p equals to p equals to int star malloc n into size of int. Okay, so n is equal to 5 means 5 elements memory will be allocated. n is equal to 10 if you enter, then 10 elements memory will be allocated. Okay, right. Now, we need to confirm whether memory allocated successfully or not. Sometimes what happens if sufficient memory is not available, if sufficient memory is not available, then what happens means it may not allocate a memory. You requested memory for 10 elements, but there is no uh, continuous space available for 10 elements, then it gives that means it won't allocate memory. Okay, so in such case, what happens is this malloc function returns a null pointer. That null will be stored in a P. So that's why after writing this malloc function, immediately you have to check whether memory allocated successfully or not. Okay, how we can check that? So in P, what is there? If memory is allocated, that memory address will be present in P. If memory not allocated, P contains null. P contains a null pointer. So that's why you have to check if p is equals to equals to equals to null okay that means if p contains null pointer that means memory allocation failed and you say exit 0 or exit 1 immediately come out because there is no memory you cannot perform any operation yes or no okay so this checking should be done okay so if not not allocated immediately exit from the program by using the function exit 0 or exit 1 function Otherwise, memory allocated successfully and the first byte address 1002 is stored in a P. Now, P is pointing to this uh, dynamic memory. Now, we can store elements into this uh, memory block. How we can store using the pointer? Just see here. Okay. So, enter percentage D integers. Now, you ask uh, the user to enter 5 integers. Okay. So, assume he entered 5 integers like this. 11, 22, 33, 44, 55. So, one by one, you have to read and store into this uh, dynamic memory. Okay. Now, using a for loop, how we can do this now see here. So now I'm using only pointer notation here. See in for loop. I'm not using any loop counter variable. Okay. So I say Q is equal to P. Please remember this P should point to this first byte only. We should not disturb this. Okay. So that's why I'm taking another pointer Q and I'm assigning this P to Q. When you say Q is equal to P, whatever value present in P in the box P, that will be stored in a Q. That means 1002 will be stored in a queue. Okay. So just see here. This is box for queue. Okay. So in P, 1002 is there. That 1002 will be stored in a queue. What is 1002 here? It is nothing but the first byte address. First element address. Nothing but we can say that Q is also now pointing to the first element. Q is also now pointing to the first element. Okay. So then Q less than P plus N. Q less than P plus N. Okay. So when you say P plus N, what happens? How it calculates? What is P value? 1002 plus N. What is N value? 5. I said 5 into scale factor. 5 into scale factor will be taken here. Okay. So 5 into what is the scale factor for integer? 4. Integer occupies 4 bytes. No. So 5 into 4. 5 into 4 is 20 plus 2. 22. 1022. So this P plus N value will become 1022. And what is the value of Q? 1002. Then the condition will be tested like this. 1002 less than 1022. Yes, true. So when it is true, now you can read uh, 
the first element kf percentage d and just you can say q q means it is nothing but is there in q 1002 address okay so that thing but we are saying that store the first element in address 1002 so it goes to 1002 address and stores the first element 11 will be stored there okay so then what is the address of second element 1006 1010 10 this element 1014 and this is 1018 here okay so next uh, the control goes to q plus plus what is q value 1002 when you say q plus plus is it 1003 when you say q plus plus is it 1003 no okay so q plus plus means 1000 goes to the next element okay so next element is 1006 so 1002 plus 1 into 4 1 into 4 is 4 that is how it is calculated so 4 plus 2 is 6 1000 six it calculates okay hope uh, uh, from this calculation you understand q plus plus value otherwise let me just uh, show here okay so what is q value here this is 1000 2 sir no so 1002 Plus, then one multiplied by four will be performed. Scale factor. Okay, so one thousand two plus four, one thousand six. That's why one thousand six is nothing but address of a next element. Okay, so it goes to the address of a next element. So when you say Q plus plus, now see here Q is pointing to first element eleven. Okay, so when you say Q plus plus. it goes to the next element that means q now contains 1006 which is address of a next element okay so then again checks the condition what is happening next after q plus plus control comes to condition part q then p plus n what is p plus n value 1022 <coughs> so what is q value now 1006 1006 less than 1022 yes true so then again it goes to scanf function so it reads the next number 22 it reads and that will be stored in a 1006 just say q q means 1006 go to the address 1006 and store a 22 there that's how it reads okay so again q plus plus that means q now goes to the next element 1010 it contains okay so 1010 less than 1022 yes true so again it goes to scan a function so reads the next number and that will be stored in 1010 33 will be stored here Okay, so then what happens next? Q plus plus again. So when you say Q plus plus, it goes to next element. 1014 will be stored in a Q. Okay, so again check the condition. 1014 less than 1022. Yes, true. So scan up. Read the next number. 44 it reads and stores in 1014. So again Q plus plus. That means 1018. Check the condition. 1018 less than 1022. Yes. So scan up. Read the next number. 55 and store. into this uh, last uh, location okay so this is how the for loop repeats here okay so again what happens q plus plus now q plus plus means what happens 1022 it goes so again check the condition 1022 less than 1022 false then comes out from the loop okay so this is how now your pointers look like after storing the element your q will be pointing to the next location 1022 it is pointing now okay so again from this dynamic memory you have to read and uh, print uh, the elements the elements from dynamic memory are okay so then you will get on the screen the elements from dynamic memory are okay so one by one you have to read that means again you have to st start from element 11 22 33 this way you have to print so that means i have to again you bring the queue back to element 11 okay so element 11 address is 1002 where is it in p it is available so directly when you say q is equal to p again q comes back to 11 here okay so again you can use a for loop same for loop you can use for q is equal to p q less than p plus n q plus plus but this time q is equal to p means what happens 1002 will be present and q now comes back to first element q now pointing to first element we can say okay so 1000 uh, 2 less than 1022 true then printf percentage 4d comma now see here q means address 1002 
in that address element we want to print so in print f you have to say star q you have to use print f percentage 4d comma star q if you say star q the value present in 1002 address what is the value in 1002 address 11 so on the screen you can see 11 printed on the screen okay so again q plus plus goes to the next element okay so this repeats goes to the next element and prints the star q means it prints okay i am not changing the pointer here in uh, diagram okay so now you try to understand so again q plus plus means goes to the next element 33 it prints q plus plus goes to the next element 44 it prints q plus plus goes to the next element 55 it prints okay so this way the same for loop repeats and uh, prints all the elements okay so when you say free q plus plus it comes out from the loop now after coming out from the loop now you have to free this memory you have to release this memory okay so how to release this memory free and what is the pointer pointing to this block of memory p when you say free p what happens now p contains null p contains a null that is logically speaking this block of memory is removed now this block of memory is removed okay now see here there is no memory but still Q is pointing to some memory location. Q is pointing to some memory location. This is called a dangling pointer. This is called as a dangling pointer. If a pointer is pointing to some unknown memory, that type of pointers are called dangling pointers. Okay, right. So memory is released now, then return zero, close. So this is how you can use malloc function to allocate memory dynamically and uh, store elements in that dynamic memory and again read uh, elements from the dynamic memory print onto the screen and again before you come out from the program release that memory by using free function so free function means just free and what is ever whatever pointer Initially, whatever pointer you assigned to that pointer you pass as argument to free function. So then the memory will be released here. Okay, right. So this is about malloc function. Next uh, function is CLF function, allocating multiple blocks of memory. Here only one block of memory I have allocated here. Just see here. Now, such blocks of memory, I want to allocate multiple blocks, like two-dimensional array, if I want to store, then I need such a blocks of memory, two or three such blocks I require. So then we can use this uh, CLR function, allocating multiple blocks of uh, memory. Okay, so this uh, we'll discuss tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll explain this with an example, and these are very, very important uh, functions dynamic memory allocation functions are very important okay so let me take the attendance